Okay, uh, then good morning everyone and welcome to CHI Oriris Demo 0 0.8. Uh, today we have five demos and one short talk. Uh, the first one from today for today, oh sorry, I'm going to, okay. Yes, first one for today is a release 0 0.8 overview from Roshan. And afterwards, we are going to have two demos uh, regarding our child device support enhancement. And then uh, afterwards, the different topic, uh, OTA update of CH, and also Yocto Linux distribution, and the new script to delete CH from a device. Uh, before we really start, uh, I need to tell you some housekeeping rules. So this meeting will be recorded. It's a record, recording is already started and it's going to be posted on YouTube. And it's, each demo has maximum 20 minutes time slot Then 15 minutes we are going to use for demo and the last five minutes for Q&A session. Because it's going to be recorded and uh, going to be posted on YouTube, it will be good. So during the demo time, uh, if you have a question, please hold on and then you can ask that question on the Q&A session. And also, if you have any more questions, uh, uh, even after the demo, uh, you can reach to us on our Discord channel. I'm going to post the URL link on the chat soon. Okay, uh, then we can start the first one. So from Roche and then it is 0 0.8 overview. Okay, great. Thank you, Rina. And I hope you can see my screen. Can anyone confirm if you can see my screen? You can yes. see it. Yeah, perfect. Yes. Yep. OK, great. Uh, so I am filling in for Andre, who is uh, who has some other engagements today. So this is about the whole 0 0.8 release. You know, it will be available in the next couple of days and we have a whole lot of, uh, you know, goodies available there. So let me start with the first major support we have added is around child devices. Uh, you can uh, so yeah, you can now leverage thin edge as a gateway for child and leaf devices and, uh, you know, we have a, a spectrum of capabilities added there. There was already some support for telemetry, but we have expanded it with events and alarms uh, from child devices uh, to uh, uh, that is now supported by ThinEdge. You can dynamically provision your child devices. So you can plug your child devices and get it provisioned uh, remotely from cloud. Doesn't need any uh, you know, restart or any, any component restart of ThinEdge. Uh, the devices can be dynamically provisioned and you can also manage all the configurations on child devices. There would be a detailed demo around it. All of this is available as a integration with Cumulosity IoT device management uh, and specific features around the configuration management. So that's one major area where we have really expanded uh, and it has been a highly requested feature from uh, many of our customers. Uh, and uh, yeah, the second one is about the cleanup for uh, installation. I think uh, one of the uh, request has been to be able to uninstall ThinEdge uh, pretty easily and remove it, but also do it with a use case where if, if I want to preserve all my configurations, I can do that. And then the next time I install ThinEdge, then all the existing custom configurations which, are, which you might have built, they continue to work. So that's why we have two options, uh, remove and purge with purge both the configurations and ThinEdge itself is completely removed. Uh, whereas with remove, your configurations are, are preserved and all the ThinEdge components are, are removed. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is about the whole cleanup capability which we have added with 0 0.8. Uh, we have added further extensions to service monitoring. So earlier we had the health endpoints for uh, some of the thin edge components, but now you can add uh, 
with uh, your with your custom plugins you can add uh, health endpoints and publish those data onto Thinage, and all of that can be used to write custom applications where all that data on Thinage could be could be then used for you know uh, interesting applications so this makes it uh, very extensible and uh, you know as part of the whole monitoring capability on Thinage. The next one is about support for Yocto. Again, we have had done some experiments in the past as to how this could be done uh, in our examples repository, but now we have brought in the whole Yocto support as part of uh, ThinEdge release. Uh, so you can now add ThinEdge as a layer to your customized Linux distribution using the whole Yocto framework. I think there is also going to be a detailed demo about it uh, where you can see, uh, you know, ThinEdge added a using Yocto to uh, uh, yeah to your custom uh, customized Linux. And the last one, but a very common uh, request is the over the air update of Thinage itself. You can now upgrade all the Thinage packages between across releases uh, remotely from Cumulosity using the whole over the air update capability. And uh, yeah, that should smoothen the migration from one release to the other in a very remote manner. That's a quick brief on the highlights. And I, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, and then I'll hand it over to Rina. Okay, thanks, Roshan. Then now we can start the demo part. The first presenter is Pradeep. The title, Child Device Support of Cumulosity Supported Operations. Uh, thank you, Rina. Uh, let me share my screen. Hope you guys can see my screen. Um, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, okay. Um, this demo is about um, child uh, the uh, supported operation for the child devices. As Roshan mentioned, uh, we added a couple of features for child devices. Uh, this is one of them. So uh, when we add a new child device, uh, so um, to Cumulosity sp uh, specifically, um, so it will announce its capabilities and operations that are supported on that child device. So um, when it connects to, uh, how it works is like it, it connects to uh, the parent device, the thin device, then the Thinet device uh, itself will take these operations and it publishes onto the uh, cloud under the child device. I'll show that demo. So as of now, we have uh, sub we support uh, configuration management uh, feature uh, under this supported operations. And what are the other features we support is uh, dynamically provisioning a child device. For example, um, if you add a new child device, you don't need to restart Thinet. It automatically uh, creates a uh, child device in a Cumulosity Cloud, and also uh, it publishes the supported operations onto the Cumulosity Cloud. And also, uh, we can dynamically add a new operation for that specific child device, and also we can remove. Uh, the same thing will be reflected on the Cumulosity side as well. This is the uh, basic overview. Um, let me show the demo. Um, I have connected my device to Cumulosity. Uh, it's up and running. Um, second, um, so this is my device. Under my device, I have child devices. I have one child device already created. So let me show how it works when we want to add a new child device. Um, for example, um, if I want to add a new child device, I have to create a directory under slash etc tedge operations c8 y directory as a new child device. For example, say child three. I'll create a directory here. Which already exists. Uh, let's do child four. What's happening? I have played around a bit actually. Uh, let's do child seven. So now it it's uh, 
I created the uh, directory for that particular child, uh, which I want to provision. I have to add a operation onto it actually. So I'll create a, a operation inside that directory child seven. Um, this is uh, about um, this. This actually is a uh, configuration operation what we support actually when I create that one. It publishes a uh, operation onto the Cumulosity Cloud. Now we can go to cloud and see um, is that child device created. Now we can see the child device is created. Under that, if we go here, we can see configuration operation is supported. So this is how we provision a new child device. Now, if I want to remove that a configuration operation, um, if I, I don't want to. Uh, uh, I want to remove that operation, so I just delete that operation from the directory. Now that operation is not published. The updated um, operation list will be published to the Cumulosity Cloud. Now, if we can go here and see, I just refresh the page. Now we can see that configuration management is gone. Actually. We will no more support uh, configuration management operation here. Uh, this is how it works actually dynamically adding the operation and dynamically creating the device. Uh, this is all the demo. If you have any questions. Um, just to give you a hint, actually, uh, there is an issue. Um, the child device should be created when we create the directory itself. Uh, we are on to fix uh, that issue, actually. Um, now it just creates the child device only once we have one operation, at least one operation inside that directory. Uh, yeah, this has to be fixed. There are no questions or I, I have one question for that. So can it be any operations for example, like really random one like CTY yeah, something? Can, yeah, you can create any operation, for example, but I wanted to show what is visible on the CTY cloud. That's why I chose that one. You can just add any operation. Sorry. Um, it will publish, but I don't know where it will be, where it will appear. It, it will just publish that operation to the cloud. It can be any operation. For example, okay. um, if I log config quest, I think. So, so I hope this will be visible here. Oh, it's not actually. Yeah, uh, you can uh, you can. Uh, create any operation. It's not related, just configuration file, but it should be supported on that device. When we when we uh, trigger that operation from the cloud, what are we act, what actions are we going to do on the device? So otherwise, it does not make any sense. Yeah, thanks. The F is low, lowercase log file. So ah, okay. change that. Maybe yeah. Thanks, Selvin. Yeah, you can see now it supports log request operation as well. To remove, it will go actually. That log request uh, feature is gone now. Any other questions? Thanks, Oturin. Yep, thanks, Pradeep, for the nice presentation. Uh, then, next to present is Alvin, a child device support of Cumulus configuration plugin. 
Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, so let me just share my screen first. OK. Hope you can see a uh, slide deck. Yes. Yeah, yeah. OK. Yeah, so hello, everyone. So this uh, <clears throat> this presentation is on the uh, configuration management support that we have extended for child devices with the current 0.8 release. Uh, so prior to this release, we already had some child device capability. So the child devices could send data to cloud. So like sending measurements, uh, uh, emitting events or raising alarms. So all this northbound data support was already there for child devices. But a very common request that we've had from our customers is that they would like to tune things on these child devices. Okay, so for example, the frequency at which uh, the, the measurements are emitted, or uh, or even controlling what all measurements to be sent to the cloud, like so, you add new measurement or remove some measurements that it's already sending and stuff like that. So, and typically they have <laughs> these kinds of uh, customizations captured in configuration files. So they wanted this ability to control these configurations from the cloud, and uh, for that. To enable uh, these capabilities, we have extended our configuration management support that we already had for Thinnets devices to child devices as well. Okay, so that's what we are officially releasing with our 0 0.8 release. Now, for this feature to work, <clears throat> Thinnets cannot do everything on its own because the child device typically is an external device, right? So uh, Thinnets cannot go and directly change the file, read a file from that external device or update a file on their external device. So you need support from that child device for to make it work. Okay. And for that, so obviously on the gateway device, we'll have Thinnets installed on it with its MQTT APIs that you're all familiar with if you had. And for this specific feature and for any for many features in the future as well, we have exposed some HTTP APIs as well. So that's something new with this 0 .8 release. And from the child device, we expect a piece of software to be running on the child device that can coordinate this configuration management operations with Thinnets. And we call that uh, <clears throat> that piece of software the child device agent uh, in our documentation and for the rest of the session. OK, so this is a piece of software that's actually doing quite a lot of heavy lifting on the child device by, say, reading the configuration files on that the child device file system or upload updating the uh, configuration files on this file system etc etc okay so how the interaction happens will uh, we'll get into uh, the details of that later but let's first start with a quick demo okay so <clears throat> here i've got my thin edge device and uh, if you see the child device list currently it's empty so i haven't connected my child device yet now uh, I'm going to start my child device. So I've got a script that mimics a child device. So that child device agent rather. And uh, so the child device needs to do certain things to get to create the child device uh, entity in Cumulosity Cloud. So before that, uh, let's look at uh, a configuration file. So, So there is this configuration file called C8Y configuration plugin .toml. So those who are familiar with the configuration management feature of Thinage itself, so this name uh, might be familiar. Okay, so this is the configuration file that we use to declare the supported configuration list. So the configuration files that you would like to be managed from the cloud. Okay, so for the child device also, we need to have a similar file, a C8Y configuration plugin .toml. And here for my child device, I've got two entries so this is the toml file this is in the toml format so i've got two entries here okay one for a configuration uh, type called foo and the other one called bar and there are two configuration files file paths okay so this is how the configuration file uh, looks like huh. this is the configuration file format that we mandate our configuration plugin mandate and if you look at just to see uh, that foo.configuration file currently has a simple value called v1 OK, and this is what I'm what we are going to manage from the cloud. And with that, we are going to start the child device agent. OK, so it's a Python script currently. It's a Python script that's mimicking the child device. So I'll start that and it has already done certain things. The bootstrap part. And now if you head back to the Kipnosity UI and refresh. Huh, you'll see that the child device is here. OK, so 
the child device has bootstrapped itself and the entry is here. And as you can see, it has the configuration management feature enabled. Okay, now head to that particular uh, tab and I'm going to, and you, you can already see the foo and bar configuration types listed in the configuration file and the C8Y configuration plugin uh, entry as well. So this is basically this file uh, contains the list of configurations supported by the child device, which is foo and bar. So you can even uh, remotely control the configuration list with this feature. OK, but yeah, let's do that later. But first, let's start with uh, fetching a configuration file. So for the type foo, so I'm going to in that request. And as you can see that V1 content from the child device, we have fetched it. OK, so that's the configuration fetch or configuration snapshot feature. And uh, now I'm going to update the same <clears throat> with the new content. So I'm going to update it with the content V2. So I'm going to send it. Come on. Yeah. Send it to the device. And that also got succeed. That also succeeded. And now if I fetch it again, so it should change from V1 to V2. And there you go, V2. Now, if you go back to uh, the device and check the file content, as you can see, it's the updated content from V2. Okay. So this is, yeah, basically how the feature works, an overview of the feature. Okay. But there was quite some interactions between the child device agent and the uh, thinnest device that happened when all this was happening. OK, so let's get into some details of it. So as you saw, uh, there is a there is thin edge itself that's involved in this whole process, and there is this child device agent as well. OK, so what are the responsibilities of thin edge? OK, its first responsibility is manage the supported configuration list of child device. So as you saw, there was a normal file that the child device had where it was listing all the supported configuration files. So thin edge will be managing those files okay and the next responsibility obviously is uh, map the configuration upload and configuration download requests coming from cumulosity into thin edge on config snapshot and config update request okay so config upload maps to config snapshot request on thin edge and con config download uh, maps to config update request on thin edge so whenever you get a request from map from cumulosity we map it to the appropriate thin edge command and then send it to the uh, send it to the child device okay and during this process for example for a config snapshot operation uh, the child device needs to share its configuration file with thin edge okay so uh, we currently accept such file uploads uh, via an http api okay so we need to accept co such configuration snapshot uploads from the child device so this is something thin edge provides and thin edge will re-upload that file to cumulosity so instead of making the child device upload things directly to, to the cloud so thin edge acts as a proxy in between so thin edge accepts the file uh, from child device and re-uploads them to cumulosity similarly for a config <coughs> update operation so in the incoming c8y download config file request from cumulosity cloud you will have a url to uh, the the configuration, the updated configuration file. OK, so thin edge will up download that file using the from that URL. OK, and then make it available to the child devices so, so that the child device can actually download it from thin edge on the local network. Again, we are not expecting the child device to download something directly from a cloud. Okay, so we will download it and keep it on our uh, on the thin edge device so that uh, the child device for it, it's just a local download. From the local network. Okay, so these are the responsibilities of the net. Okay, and now coming to the child device agent. The child device again, it needs to do the bootstrapping first. Okay, so as part of the bootstrapping, it needs to publish its supported config file list to the net. So that contents of the uh, C8 by configuration plugin dot file that you saw earlier. So that's a bootstrapping thing, and and then respond to any config snapshot or config update request from the net as in when uh, the net receives those requests from the cloud. So as part of this process, uh, you will be receiving these configuration management operations via MQTT. The child device will be receiving these operations via MQTT. 
and uh, it needs to. So this agent is the one that really reads or updates the config files from the local file system of the device because the nets cannot directly go and read it. So this agent will be reading or updating these uh, configuration files uh, on the device and obviously uh, either upload or download these configuration files via the HTTP file transfer service of the niche. So this is the local service that I was talking about. So you upload things there or download things from that local service. And when things are done, when you are done with processing this operation, so you will be sending configuration management operation status back to Thinet via MQTT again. Okay, so these are the things that the child device agent has to uh, do. So some MQTT interactions and some HTTP interactions as well. Okay. So let's uh, look at the child device bootstrap process. Okay, so maybe uh, we'll do it live. So I'm subscribing to <laughs> all the MQTT uh, interactions that happens between the Tinet and child device by subscribing to the, this, to this topic. And this is the child ID uh, of my device. Okay, let's subscribe to that. And let's start over by starting the Python script again. Okay, so initially it's uploading the configuration file, the content of that TOML file, okay, uh, to this endpoint. OK, so as you can see, it has the child device ID in it and the configuration type, which is C8Y hyphen configuration hyphen plugin. So you need to uh, upload the file to this endpoint. And then after the upload is done, uh, the agent needs to send an MQTT notification to this topic, which is a configuration snapshot topic for that child device ID with this content. OK, so it says it's a path and uh, the type, so the type will be C8Y configuration plugin. The path here doesn't matter uh, for this particular configuration type. OK, so this is the bootstrap process. Uh, so there is the file, the configuration file, TOML file. You upload this file as is to this endpoint and then finally send a MQTT notification. Now, <clears throat> how do you handle a configuration snapshot request? OK, so it's so that's also uh, an MQTT and HTTP interaction. So once again, let's show that, see that live. So let's fetch this configuration again from the cloud. Okay, so the the operation has succeeded. And if you come back and see here, so there was a request. So this request, request for configuration snapshot sent to the child device from ThinEdge with a URL and this is the URL where uh, this is the URL that the child device is expected to use to upload its configuration file snapshot. OK. And the path information as well and type information as well. So so this request, this request will go to the child device and the child device agent in response will first send an executing response saying that OK, I received this request. I'm going to do that. So it's more like an acknowledgement send back so it's a response send back to thin edge from the child device agent okay and after that it actually performs that http upload of this file home oh, also desktop this particular file to this uh to this endpoint as well but yeah you can't see it here uh it's yeah it's happening in the background and once the upload is done so another response once again a response for the config snapshot operation is sent to this topic with the status successful. OK, so this is the interaction that's happening between the parent device and the child device, sorry, the thin edge device and the child device agent. OK, similarly, uh, <clears throat> even when you uh, push an update back to uh, back to the device from the cloud, a uh, similar interaction happens. So this time it's a thin edge command a request for configuration update. And once again, it contains a URL uh, for that particular type. And here, the ThinEdge has already downloaded the content from uh, Cumulosity, the configuration file content from Cumulosity, and may, made it available via this endpoint, this HTTP endpoint, so that the child device can actually download it and apply it. So once again, the child device first sends an executing response, and then it will go and download the file from this URL apply it as well. So that's a critical thing. So it's a child device agent that has to apply the configuration update. And then finally, once everything is done, send back the successful states. 
update. Okay, so this is the this is the protocol or the contract that we expect from the child device agent implementer that it has to do these things. Okay, so yeah, that's how uh, uh, these interactions work. And finally, coming back to some of some the deployment. So typically, in most cases, what we have seen is that the child device agent will be running on the external device itself. Okay, so and it will be accessing or interacting with Tinnit via the HTTP and MQTT APIs that I showed just now. But we have also come across certain cases where the child device is pretty limited, so you can't install a new piece of software or anything like that on that particular device. So in such cases, we have seen <coughs> uh, deployments where a child device agent is running on the Tinnit gateway device itself. OK, along with Tinnit, so Tinnit and the child device agent are installed on the same gateway device and that agent will communicate with that external child device via some internal protocol. So but again, the APIs remain the same, whether the child device is running locally on the gateway device or externally, it will be interacting with Tinnit via its HTTP and MQTT endpoints and the interactions are exactly as described here via the MQTT topics and HTTP URLs, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So yeah, that's basically it. Uh, so you'll have this feature available um, by uh, by the end of this week once we make the public release. Okay. So any questions? Okay. If not, then over to you. There's a question from Murat on the chat. Okay. Uh, actually, I tried it works if it is soft blink. OK, I think there was a question for. Uh, for yeah, that's from my the team. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to answer as well. Yeah. Okay. All right, so here yeah, there are no further questions. Stop sharing over to you, Rina. Thank you. OK, yeah. thanks, Arvin, for the big presentation. And the uh, next presenter is me, Rina, uh, about ODA CHIO update by APT. OK, so let me share my screen. Uh, it, it might be you are wondering or maybe even surprised what uh, is this title, CH uh, ODA update, because uh, since long time, we already have supported uh, Cumulosity's software management feature, and now CH has eight packages released as a Debian. Um, so maybe you you have one question: Was it really not possible uh, before 0 0.8 to upgrade all CH IO eight packages? Uh, the answer is actually partly yes and partly no. Uh, the thing is, we have five packages, they are daemons, and three packages, they are not daemons. So not daemons means just you run the command and exit immediately. So for these non-daemon packages, uh, even before 0 0.8 release, you can upgrade a version uh, from older version to newer version, via Cumulosity. However, um, uh, from 0 0.8 finally, we can announce that you can update also uh, daemon packages. So this is a actually core change uh, of my story. Uh, before 0 0.8, that means 0 0.7.7, .7, uh, as we described in our installation guide, all demos must be stopped before upgrading versions. So here we say that in the doc. That means could not upgrade packages OTA because uh, uh, to support software management feature uh, over Cumulosity, you need to run Tech Mapper, CHY, and Tech Agent. They are both demos. And if you stop that, these demons, and of course you cannot continue using this software update. 
Uh, this was what we had before 0 0.8. And after 0 0.8, I can say that so no longer need to stop any CNC.io daemons uh, when you upgrade the packages. Uh, however, there are some conditions uh, depending the packages. So for five daemon packages. So I, I will uh, explain from now on. So for CTY configuration plugin, CTY log plugin, and touch watchdog, these are also daemons. So OTA update is available from uh, all that before the, uh, the version older than 0 0.8 uh, to 0 0.8 uh, is available. So let me demo this first one. So I'm going to see it by configuration plugin. And now I have Raspberry Pi and it's already connected to Cumulosity via CH. So this Raspberry Pi uh, now has set a configuration plugin version 0 0.7.4. So this one, it's before 0 0.8 version. And uh, let me confirm that it's running. Yes, it's running. And uh, this is a device on the Cumulosity. Uh, we can again confirm that it's really working. It's not felt from device, so it works. So let me upgrade to 0 0.8 C8Y. And zero point eight. So before the demo, I have already uploaded some packages on the Cumulosity's this software repository for configuration plugin. Yes, I have like that. So that's why I could choose this version. Then let me press apply changes. Takes a couple of seconds. Oh, what happened? <laughs> I didn't expect that. Huh. This is a uh, yeah, live demo. Yep. Something I expected. Interesting. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. This is some parse, parse error, so unauthorized. Maybe it's not really connected. Let me reconnect. And, and restart the service. Okay, then again, let me check the installed version is still 0 0.7.4 and the configuration plugin is running. Okay, then let me try again. Date to 0 0.8, apply changes, executing. Okay, now it's green. Yeah, we had an accident before, but uh, yeah, as I said, uh, you can upgrade from older version to 0 0.8. Let me check again which version is now installed in the device. So now 0 0.8.0. .0. Then of course, uh, from 0 0.8.0 .0 to 0 0.8.1 to some further, to, newer version, you can upgrade. So oh, 0 0.8.1 is not yet released, but I created for the demo purpose. Uh, the contents are completely the same as 0 0.8.0, 0, just I changed the version name.
yes it works then i can check again yes now zero dot it dot one so this is the first one for c configuration plugin c rock plugin the watchdog you can upgrade from older version to 0 0.8 and always version and also from 0 0.8.0 to uh, newer version you can also do it and the next one touch mapper it's uh, for the, the, a bit different condition uh, all the upgrading is available only from 0 0.8.0 to later version that means if you upgrade from 0 0.7.7 .7 or older to 0 0.8 Still, you need to stop the service before upgrading. Okay, so now my device has touch mapper and 0 0.8 is installed. And of course, mapper is running, otherwise, software management won't work. But uh, let me check again. Yes, status is running. Then I'm going to install 0 0.8.1 for mapper. Uh, mapper here, yes. And apply changes. Yes, again, it's successful. And I can check the version of Touch Mapper at yeah, 0.8.1. And also, I can check the status. It's running in the healthy status. So, without stopping the Mapper service, so you can upgrade the version from 0 0.8 to the later version. Okay, this is for Touch Mapper. And the most important one is for touch agent. Touch agent is a core component. It's responsible for upgrading or triggering uh, software update, install, removal, these things. It's a similar condition with Mapper. Also, OTA upgrading is available only zero, from 0 0.8.0 .0 to later version. If you want to upgrade from 0 0.7.7 .7 or older to 0 0.8, you still need to stop the service before upgrading. And for a touch agent, you need one more step. After OTA upgrading successful, marked in Cumulosity or done, device restart is required. So to be precise, uh, service restart is required. But from uh, what CH is supporting with the Cumulosity, uh, device restart is the easiest way to restart the service so that's why i declare here device restart is required okay then again check the version now i have touch 8 and 0 0.8 and it should be running running yes then let's upgrade asian to 0 0.8.1 Apply changes. Yes, it's green. And agent is running. And now installed version is agent 0.8.1. However, for agent, um, unlike other demons, uh, we don't stop agent service while upgrading. That means now agent service is running, but they are using the old binary, 0.8.0 .0 binary. But we want to use the binary uh, packaged with 0.8.1. So that's why uh, we need to have service restart. Then that's the easiest way is the restart device. And the thing is supporting. Yep, connection crossed.
not the top. Okay, while waiting for Raspberry Pi, so I had to mention the last one, no daemon. As I said, three packages are no daemon. Tetch, Tetch Mapa, uh, Tetch Apama plugin, Tetch APT plugin, the OTA upgrading is already available. For example, you can do it from 0 0.7.4 to 0 0.7.7. .7. So after Raspberry Pi is up, I'm going to do it, the last one. So now agent is running. Because we restarted, apparently it's going, it's using the new binary from the 0 0.8.1 package. And, yep, now like that. So now I'm going to upgrade Tetch. Now we have 0 0.7.4. Tetch. Then, just change to 0 0.7.7. .7. Now executing. Yes, it's green. Then we see install touch. It's now S0.7.7, before it was 0 0.7.4. And also Tetch, yeah, it says 0 0.7.7. So yeah, that's everything from my demo. Any questions? Not a question, but more like a, probably a, an improvement that we can consider. Like, so if we can provide some sort of a bundle package uh, so currently, when they have to, customer has to upgrade, so they have to upgrade like four, five, six packages separately, right? So if we could provide some sort of a bundle package, where uh, say a touch something called touch bundle, and if you just up, update that, if that bundle could go and update all the other individual components as well, that probably would be nice. But yeah, something, something to consider. And if it's an external package, then. Maybe we can avoid <clears throat> issues like having to restart the device because as, that, as an external component, it might be able to restart the energy agent as well uh, once it's done with all the updates. So there could be some improvements possible with such a design. But yeah, something to consider. More of a feedback. Question. Yeah, thanks, Arvind. Yeah, it's a good point. We have eight packages. It's quite a lot. Any other comments? OK, then I finish my demo, then hand over to the next one. Uh, next presenter is Christoph, uh, CHIO on Yoke to Linux distribution. Yeah, thank you, Rina. Um... So hope you can see my screen. Yes. Yep. Yep. OK, so I'll present uh, our Yocto layer distribution for uh, for Finnish. Uh, starting with the first change from the last community meetup, uh, our meta touch layer is now located under Finnish uh, repository, so you can uh, Download it from here. Uh, and there were also a few changes since that uh, meetup. So, first, we added uh, a new um, support for uh, another release of Yocto, the 3.4 Hunister, because we got a request after the meeting. So, now uh, you can also use it under the same branch as Kirkstone. We made some uh conditional changes to the configuration file that allows it to use under the one branch 
And additionally, there is also a script available for mainly for us, but also for some users that's called update layer. So uh, now uh, we use it to update the, the Octo version to uh, the whole layer to, to higher version. It's still in work in progress uh, stage, so it does, for example, does not check uh, the environment of the user. If the, for example, Cargo Bitbake is installed, but you can use it to update uh, your um, finished version or to use some older one if it is not available in releases. Yeah. Uh, and it must be run from the script uh, directory. That's important for now, but we hope we will change it soon. We have also uh, uh, there's now a built finage for a Yocto Linux distribution in tutorial uh, section of uh, finage documentation. Maybe I'll go quickly through it. Uh, so uh, here is uh, first of all the requirements: how to uh, run uh, Yocto on your device. Mm. We have also quick installation for our layer and some additional how to configure it on the Raspberry Pi device. Uh, so again, uh, let me see uh, quickly how to. I'll show you how to quickly uh, install uh, our layer for Kickstone branch. So let me. We run Bitbake environment. So uh, the first step is to uh, clone all, all necessary uh, layers for the um, for the finet. So it's that itself and meta open embedded that we use some of the uh, components so meta we meta Python and meta networking you can add it using command uh, yeah uh, using feedback layers up layer yes. and the path to the uh, uh, to the uh, Metal layer. So, in case, for example, for open embedded, I will uh, use it. That and it's static. So, all the added layers are located in the layers conf file. That's in the conf directory. You can check if all layers were added correctly. Uh, this is my setup. Additionally, I have Meta Raspberry Pi that is uh, necessary for me to run it on a Raspberry Pi device, but it's not necessary to make the Meta Finet uh, work. And yeah, and so I will skip the uh, adding the rest of the uh, layers because they're already in it. Next, we need to configure the build and add the implementer systemd to the local conf file. So it looks like this. Just simply one line. And after that, you are actually ready to uh, build the finish. You can either uh, run our ready to go simple uh, image of touch that just uh, contains all the uh, necessary packages. So all the touch modules. Or you can add them here by image install depend uh, to the local conf file and run a uh, bit by core image minimal that is necessary to. Uh, it's the lowest version of uh, bit by that target that we need to use. Uh, I will not show uh, how it builds because if they can take lots of time several hours in my case, for example, but I built it yesterday, so it's ready to go. Uh, so now I will show how it works on the Raspberry Pi device. I prepared a small demo. 
for that, let me just connect to uh, the Raspberry Pi device. So as you can see, uh, Attach is available in version for now 0.7.5. We will soon upgrade it to 0 0.8. Uh, we are just testing it for now. And let me just uh, send uh, a simple data to the Kumulo City server to just show that it works. So, as you can see, the uh, certificate was created. Uh, I created it yesterday uh, under the name of the test, so it is available here. I can also connect. Uh, to the uh, most deserve, uh, cloud. Well, it connected successfully, and now I can, for example, send uh, simple data to the, uh, to, the data, to the cloud. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was sent here, so it's working. Um, that's for the demo. If there are any questions, feel free to ask. So, if there are no questions, over to you, Rina. Thank you. Thanks, Christo. Okay, then we have the last demo. Uh, from Pradeep script to delete CNJO from device. Karina, I share my screen. You guys can see my screen. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, this demo is about um, uninstalling the teenage uh, or removing the teenage from the device. As uh, it was mentioned, um, by Roshan. Uh, we have this uninstall script, uh, which has um, two options. Either you can remove the thin edge completely using purge. It will remove all the configuration files and all the uh, Debian packages uh, which are installed on that device. Or if you want to retain the configuration files and if you just want to remove the uh, Debian packages um, or the binaries, you can just do it using uh, remove command. Um, see, uh, you can see the helper message here, how to use it. Um, yeah, let me directly jump into demo. Uh, this is a helper message, uh, how to use it. Uh, this uninstall Thin edge uh, script comes with two options, either remove or purge. Um, let me show how to do it. Uh, just let me show with the with just remove. Um, when I start removing, it first disconnects and then it stops all the services which are running. And it just uh, removes the thin edge the device. Uh, if you can see, we uh, actually have all our uh, configuration files in slash etc. See, you can still see these configurations existing. Uh, when you install it again, these configurations will be used. Um, I think it will be overwritten um, to that. Uh, I have my local uh, packages actually. I'll use them to install instead of. Uh, The very basic uh, things which I installed now. I want to do purge um, just to purge. Now I am not connected to Thinage, uh, this device to the cloud, so it's not disconnecting, um, just directly going and stopping binaries if they are running. 
and if I go and see configuration files, you can see there is no TED directory anymore in slash etc. It removed even the configurations. All the configurations also gone. Um, this is it. It's a pretty quick uh, demo. Any questions? Okay, if there are no questions, or do you know? Thanks, Pradeep. Okay, then it was our last demo of today. Uh, thanks everyone for joining and presenting. And then have a nice day and see you in our bi-weekly sprint demo. Thank you. Bye.